Our story continues. Last time we discovered a couple of big old cats snoozing in a barn. We met some other early Jaguar enthusiasts like me, and now we're off to visit some restoration shops and to meet some other guys who keep these dear old cars on the road. <laughs> Jaguar is largely the story of Sir William Lyons. But the real story started back in 1922, when he and a fellow motorcycle enthusiast, William Wormsley, formed a company called Swallow Sidecars Limited, or SS. It was their intention to build sidecars for motorcycles, and this they did very successfully for the next seven years. But Lyons had a greater ambition. He wanted to build motor cars. He bought a run of rolling chassis off the Austin Company and rebodied them. They were a very common saloon of their day, but quite dull to look at. He gave them the swallow treatment. Peaked roofs, interesting grills, radiator grills, zany colors. You could tell an Austin swallow across the road a mile away. It stood out. His next venture was to build an SS1 and an SS2. These were his own cars powered by a standard engine. Critics said that they looked terrific, but they were slightly underpowered, can be the case. He then built some coach-built saloons in the traditional style, heavy metal chassis, wooden frame, and the tin fixed to the frame to give the shape of the motor car, the standard practice of the day. He introduced the name Jaguar. These were SS Jaguar cars. In 1938, he made a bold move and produced his first all-steel saloon. The war, of course, came along the Second World War and interrupted his production. And after the war, anything to do with SS was just not au fait. He very quickly got rid of SS from anything on the car. Any part of the car that was stamped SS became Jaguar. You can see perhaps too a certain change in the materials involved. Pre-war was gunmetal, later was a, a cheaper alloy. Britain wanted to export materials, it wanted to export finished products. It said to its manufacturers, we'll give you steel if you export and make money because Britain was in a poor shape. New Zealand wasn't, its farmers were doing very well and it was the desire of many farmers here in New Zealand and in Australia to own a Jaguar motor car. A proportion of their wool crop went off to satisfy this craving. I'm sitting in the new Jaguar XKR and this is regarded as the spiritual successor to the E-Type, Jaguar's most famous sports car dominated the uh, car sports car market in uh, the 1960s and this car is uh, has a retail value in New Zealand of $220,000 now because of that price we sell around 20 or 30 of these cars a year in its heyday the e-type was more successful than that of a customer in 1966 who said that he'd like to buy his wife a car for their anniversary and the car that he was interested in buying for her was a Mark 10 Jaguar, which she'd seen and shown some interest in. So, unbeknown to her, he secured the purchase of a Mark 10 Jaguar, which he arranged to have prepared and ready for delivery on the date of their anniversary. At the same time, she approached the company and said that her husband had always wanted to buy an E-Type Jaguar and that she wanted to secretly buy one for him to celebrate their anniversary. So unbeknown to him, she arranged for the E-Type to be made ready for the date of their anniversary. And so when they came to the dealership on the given day, 
they were both surprised and delighted to find that each had bought one another a car, one an E-Type and one a Mark 10 Jaguar. And those were the days of the success of farming in New Zealand, of uh, the wool boom, uh, and the, the period when Jaguar was affordable at that level for those customers. The cars weren't particularly suited to the conditions in these countries. Uh, New Zealand and Australia had shingle roads with potholes. The cars were only seven inches off the ground and hardly suitable for the country existence. But then the styling was terrific. In later times, of course, most of them were fitted with a tow bar and used as a farm hack. My interest in them came by pure chance. I reached out at a friend's house and took up a book off his coffee table and there were old classic cars, Jaguar was amongst them, and I was hooked. In the last few years I restored four early Jaguars from 1938 to 46 to concourse levels. And in that time I've met other enthusiastic owners and many guys who have the skills to help to restore the cars and to keep them on the roads. My good friend Gary, a car restorer, said why don't we get together and resurrect the old New Zealand SS register. And we did this several years ago, uh, formed a club to help other members and owners of these early cars and recently have acquired six members from Australia. We also have a member in the UK and uh, in the US. It's a worldwide interest. Parts are manufactured by different people in different countries, perhaps for their own car and they make a spare. And if you want to spare something, you may source it from overseas. There are certain dealers who do make parts for the early Jaguars specifically, but they're few and far between. You have to be very resourceful. Here in New Zealand now, we have 110 members. I would think, on average, they have two cars each. So that's about 200 cars. You never know how many cars there are here. I thought that I'd track down everyone in the country, but then a letter might come in, like this one a couple of days ago. Dear Monty, I don't know what to do with my half-restored Mark V Jaguar. I wonder if you can help me find a buyer for it, etc., etc., etc. Best of all are the phone calls that come in. Late at night, someone may phone and say, do you know there's an interesting old jag in a barn on so-and-so's farm? Or uh, there's a shed on the property next to me and I'm pretty sure there's a jag in there. This is what I always find exciting. The blood begins to stir, a sleepless night is ahead, the detective in me comes out and I have a mission to track it down and see if it is in fact an interesting old jaguar or a car of another make. Running the SS Register Club for the owners of early Jaguars, posting out a monthly newsletter is both fun and routine. But the real pleasure comes from interacting with the members and their respective cars. Some of these Jaguars are wonderfully original and have been used all their lives. Others are undergoing lengthy restorations. An increasing number are now restored and back on the road. From early times, Jaguar built fast cars. Keeping up with the modern traffic flow is no problem. Big old cats have come a long way through space and time on their way to New Zealand. Some of them are slumbering in barns around the country, but these three examples are used frequently and give a lot of pleasure to their owners. When boys get together, you know what they talk about, cars. This model came out with the straight glass, yes. a later one like yours. Yes. 
was rounded, but I'm surprised that the engine num the chassis numbers should be so close together. Well, that's right. It is remarkable, really. This is the original uh, form that in 1948, when the car came out, mm -hmm. that uh, the model came out that they did, and then uh, with this uh, adjuster for the window. Uh, the later models just had a stiffer pivot on here yeah. and just a latch here and then they had this uh, uh, this adjuster only on the back uh, door window. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's, um, no, that works well actually, that. Mm. You'll see me out, but uh, I hope that um, my son Richard will keep it because he's got his own uh, XK150. After, um, Moving on to the later model Jaguars in the um, uh, 50s and 60s, uh, I just felt it, uh, and then uh, leaving the mark, I suppose, later on, I just felt that I'd like to have another of this model because I think that the, um, you know, there's nothing else that quite uh, uh, reproduces the styling. My friend Bob is a passionate man about his old Jags and a guru for the Mark V model. Bob, how long have you had this old girl? Uh, I bought it in November 89. Uh, actually got quite a story when I bought it. The, um, I saw an advert in an Auckland paper and rang the number and I was told that the owner was out and would I call that evening collect, so I did. And I made an offer and this was in September and I was expecting a call back and never heard until November. At that stage it was too busy for me to go and inspect the vehicle so I subsequently found out that the man who owned it was a member of parliament and I, he said are you coming to inspect it and I said sorry I haven't got the time I'm going to do something I've never done in my life before and he said what's that he said I'm going to take a politician at his word. <laughs> to be fair to him he's description was accurate and the deal was uh, sealed and uh, proud owner of Mark V. I've had it ever since. God. You've done some great distances in her, haven't you? On the open road it's uh, a delight to drive. My, I've got the earlier model, the Mark IV, you've got the Mark V. What's different? What, what has improved? Well the front suspension, it's the first of the Jags to have independent front suspension. It also has hydraulic brakes. Um, the front bumpers on it were improved basically for the American market. They're designed to take an impact at five miles an hour without marking. Um, and it's the same chassis that they used from the later models, the Mark 7, 8 and 9. Uh, only they shifted the engines around a wee bit further forward and it altered the handling characteristics of the car. You haven't got the P100 headlights with the quartz no. halogen lights that light up the road? <laughs> no, no. no, mine are much more uh, sedate yeah, and... Uh, it starts to look more like a modern car, doesn't it, in the styling. This is a classical old Jaguar look, and here you get the, the beginnings of the modern styling. Yes, yeah, so although this was purely an interim model, like there was only 5,926 of that particular uh, model made in a, over a period of two and a half years while they were developing the Mark VII to put the new engine, so that was the last car to have the old pushrod engine in it. Uh, you carry your Bible round with you, I see. Yeah. Wh wh what's that? Wh what's this, is, this is a, a recorded history of the of Jaguar saloon cars and has all the facts, figures, specifications, prices. That car, new in New Zealand, was £1,635, if I remember rightly. Um, uh, that was because you had to have overseas funds to buy them and to give you some idea, a Chev at the same year would be about £1,100.